Speakers, publishers, consultants, coaches, and info marketers unite. The Speaking of Wealth Show is your roadmap to success and significance. Learn the latest tools, technologies, and tactics to get more bookings, sell more products, and attract more clients. If you're looking to increase your direct response sales, create a big-time personal brand, and become the go-to guru, the Speaking of Wealth Show is for you. Here is your host, Jason Hartman. Welcome to the Speaking of Wealth Show. This is your host, Jason Hartman, where we discuss profit strategies for speakers, publishers, authors, consultants, coaches, info marketers, and just go over a whole bunch of exciting things that you can use to increase your business, to make your business more successful and more and more passive and more and more automated and more and more scalable. So we will be back with a great interview. Be sure to visit us at speakingofwealth.com. You can take advantage of our blog, subscribe subscribe to the RSS feed and many other resources for free at speakingwealth.com and we will be back with a great interview for you in less than 60 seconds. Now's your opportunity to get the Financial Freedom Report. The Financial Freedom Report provides financial self-defense in uncertain times and it's your source for innovative, forward-thinking investment property strategies and advice. Get your newsletter subscription today. You get a digital download and even more. Go to jasonhartman.com to get yours today. My pleasure to welcome Chris Burnett to the show. He is the founder of a podcast entitled 10 Drink Minimum. Great title, by the way. <laughs> and he's going to be talking to us today about how his show has grown and what they're doing with it. Chris, welcome. How are you? Hey, pretty good. How are you? Good. 10 Drink Minimum. That's a lot of drinks. Yeah. <laughs> Tell it, us it about the show. I mean, well, uh, it started in a small town in eastern New Mexico about six years ago. And uh, it was you know a bunch of college friends at the time. And uh, pretty much at the time... I was uh, doing part-time work for an apartment complex, like doing the maintenance and lawn work and whatnot, and I would listen to music on my iPod, and uh, after a while, I kind of got bored of the music I had, so I kind of switched over, and I was like, well, what are these podcasts? And I started listening to them, and, you know, some of them were really good, and some of them were absolutely horrendous, you know? And I thought, well, if these people can do it, and it gets, you know, it gets downloaded and put on iTunes, and other people can listen to it, I think I could do it too, so I... I convinced the, uh, two other people to to do it with me, and we went to Radio Shack and bought the worst possible equipment you could probably buy. And it all started there, you know, just three people sitting around drinking and just kind of having a good time. Fantastic. So what were you talking about on, on the show? Were you talking about movies, music, current events? Everything. What? Anything, anything pop culture, anything that we saw or happened to us during the day. Anything that we saw that we were like, you know, why is that? You know, why did that happen? And how come we haven't fixed that as a, you know, as a culture? Just anything we saw in, in pop culture or life that we felt was, you know, interesting or we, we thought we could put a different take on it than, you know, anybody else. And so originally there were four hosts and now it's three. just... There was three of them. No, there was three, three of them. Okay. So three. And now is it just you doing it or uh, what's the format? Uh, me and my co-host, Billy, uh, he comes and does the show with me. He, he drives over and we do the show out of my, out of my uh, apartment. Fantastic. And tell us a little bit more about it. One of the things I definitely want to get into is the fact that you do it once a week live yeah, on Ustream. Correct. And I think that's really that's neat, right. neat. But but first of all, just to get some basic info, what's the typical length of your episode? Uh, we usually do try to do about an hour to an hour and a half, depending. Uh, sometimes, you know, you know, some people have to get out and do, you know, go do something. But usually we try to run an hour and a half, and it depends on how many call in callers we have or people we have in the chat or what the energy is like, really. Uh-huh. And and how many episodes total so far? Uh, I don't, off the top of my head, I don't know. It's probably about 365, I think. Okay, wow, you've got a lot of episodes in the can. Yeah. And when did it start? Yeah, it's uh, every Tuesday night, uh, 8 p.m. Uh, Mountain Time, as we're here in the in the Rockies, you know. And, and um, when when did cool. when did you start the show though? How long ago? About six years ago. Six years ago. Okay, so you've got yeah. a lot of episodes out there now. Are they yeah. all live or some pre-recorded? No, no, no. We we went live about uh, two years ago, I believe, uh, when Ustream kind of first started. We were we were one of the first, not first, but we were one of the fledgling groups that got in on Ustream when it first started. Now everybody seems to be on it, but we were there back before they really had commercials. <laughs> and are you doing audio, video, or both? I do both. I record the show 
for podcasting, and we do the live show uh, video. You can call in. You can call into the show live. You can chat with us live. Okay, and and then the actual, I guess, podcast part of it is audio only, and that's on iTunes yeah, and that's everything, right? Correct. Okay, that's correct. Okay, fantastic. I don't. I don't do a. I don't do a live video. I don't do a podcast video, and mainly that's to push people to to be there for the live show. Right. Right. Oh, in other words, you don't want to give them that. You you want to really yeah. encourage the live audience format where people call that's in right. and interact with you. It, right. It gives you. A much we'll see our, our whole point of our show is it's not scripted, you know whatever happens happens, and when you have people call in, you get a lot more organic feel that way and how many calls do you usually take? you know sometimes you know sometimes we don't take any, and then sometimes we'll have like ten i mean it just it just ranges you know it all depends on what you know, guests you have, it depends on what person you know and and in terms of the technology for the calls, are you taking calls via skype, regular phone lines skype, or yeah. no? We do a Skype. And how do you hook those into the Ustream feed? Well, I don't know. I mean, it comes from, you know, I mean, it basically goes from, from my computer to the mixer to, you know, Ustream. Ustream is really uh, good about picking. It, it kind of just streamlines into it. I mean, that's what was really awesome about Ustream is once you log in, it'll kind of pick up your microphone and your, your speakers and everything. It's really good that way. Are you using, are you doing Ustream with a VoIP camera? Are you using the camera built into, say, your laptop computer or, or how are you oh, doing no, Ustream? No, no. I, have, I, have two, I have two high def cameras that I have placed throughout my, my uh, living room pretty much. Okay, great. So, so two high def cameras. And do you have uh, an operator working the cameras? I mean, how do you decide which camera is streaming? I do it. <laughs> you just do it as do you're hosting yeah. the show, huh? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Wow, that's yep. pretty yep. challenging to do to walk and chew yeah. gum at the same time. There, kind of thing, you know. Yeah. 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 And 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 drink a beer too. <laughs> yeah. And, and and drink a beer and and take yeah. the callers and do all of that that's stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, tell us more. What else should we know? Well, a lot of times, well, see, it started out of Eastern New Mexico. When I moved it up here to Albuquerque, I really wanted to take it to a little bit more of a local feel. And since I've added my co-host Billy Belmont, he's a he's a local musician in the Albuquerque area. And he, he pulls a lot of uh, of the local bands, and we, we get a lot of them to come in. And, um, you know, Albuquerque has a little bit of a history with, you know, musicians. You know, we have, you know, the Shins are from here. And so, you know, you never know who's going to be anybody. And, and sometimes when there's bands traveling through, we try to pull them in, you know, come and, you know, promote your show. So we, we try to take a little bit more of a local flavor. But the weird thing about this show is a lot of our listeners are not in the United States. And, uh, most of the feedback we get is from like Ireland and Australia, and we actually had a fan fly. He he was in the United States and he flew over from Florida to hang out with us for the weekend from from Australia. So. <laughs> Amazing, you know I actually had that happen once too. I had a listener to my podcast when when my office was located in Southern California. The guy just jumped on JetBlue from New York and flew in and surprised us without any warning and just say, yeah. hey, I wanted to see if you guys were for real. <laughs> I couldn't yeah. believe it. Right, yeah, and it is that way, yeah. And it's really weird because people go, yeah, do you make any money off of it? And I, you know, I really don't make any money off of it. But people will illegally send me alcohol in the mail. <laughs> and it's like, um, okay. And one time the postman walked up and he said, hey, I think this is for you. And he goes, I think it's alcohol. And I asked him, I said, hey, is that legal? And he goes, I don't know, is it? And I was like, I don't know, you're the postman. And I just thought that was pretty funny. And it was a, a fifth of Jameson that someone had sent me from England. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's great. That's very great. interesting, yeah. And and one of the other things that you do on your show is you have a couple of beers while you're doing the show, and you're yeah, kind of you're kind of sampling all the different local microbrews and that kind oh, of yeah. thing. Oh, yeah. Well, we promote, we definitely promote like some over the others, but yeah. I've had people send me microbrews from other parts of the United States and said, hey, what do you think of this microbrew? Because, you know, we're really in a microbrew. And, uh, you know, I've got some from California and some from the from up north. And uh, this is kind of interesting. It's like, okay. You know, it's not something I expected it to happen, but <laughs> it's like, okay, I'll do that. And I'm surprised that people haven't hit you up to, like, sponsor their band or sponsor their microbrew or advertise yeah, on know. your show or anything like that, have they? Well, I can't really say what's going on right now, but we, we, we got uh, asked to be on a new, there's a new website that's going to feature comedy, and we just got asked, and it's not totally done yet, but we're asked to be a part of it, so I don't know if I can really say much about it, but yeah, that that's recently just came to light, so we are we are building, you know, it's, it's one of those things where you do it for so many years, and you kind of feel like, well, I don't, you know, this is just going to be a hobby or whatnot, and out of nowhere, 
stuff's just starting to pop up. Yeah, you know? it, it, it can lead to something. That's the great thing about podcasting. It can really lead to something. Yeah. So, you know, in terms of Ustream, let's just talk about that for a minute. Now, you don't know how many people are picking up your stream? No, because, I mean, they'll tell you, like, that this many people are listening. And I, I don't really know how it works because, like, uh, I'll, I'll see on there that there's only this many people listening. And then I'll, I'll get, like, feedback from way more people that – that it even showed them, you know, I'm like, wait a minute here. So the numbers don't really match up to what I, I've seen. So I'm not totally sure how that works. Cause it'll say this many people listening live. And I, I don't really, you know, well, do, really well do you think they're giving you the feedback, not off the Ustream, but off the actual podcast where they get it on maybe I iTunes? Don't know. Well, well, I, I only, I, Ustream doesn't give me any like stats as in like, Hey, this is how many people listen to your show live. You know, they really don't. I just can see it. Like you, you can see it supposedly when you're actually podcasting, how many people are listening live. So, like, you'll see, and say it'll say, you know, there's 20 people listening live. And then, you know, all of a sudden, you know, you get, like, you know, when you get done, you get, like, 30, you know, 30 emails. You're like, wait a minute here. So, you so know. yeah, fairly small audience on Ustream. But how how are the stats looking on, on your podcast downloads? Well, I'm not, you know, we're not a huge, I mean, you know, for one, we're in the comedy section. So we're, you know, we're, and we're not, we're not famous. The comedy section used to be pretty wide open. And now all of a sudden you have a lot of, you know, the real, stars that they've decided that they you know that this is a valid media and they've jumped onto it so you know we're we're, we're kind of a small fish in a big pond now but we, we get about 500 to a thousand a week so and that's with one show per week yeah that's right yeah okay all right and what's your plan for the show i mean what are, where are you gonna go with it or, or are you just gonna sort of do it as a hobby continue to do it because it's fun and then you know if some opportunity opens up you'll take it that's right exactly and that's what I love about it is I don't have to, I can do whatever I want with it. I can shut it down tomorrow if I feel like it. But if I want to build it, it's up to me to build it and promote it and get out and, you know, put stickers up or uh, flyers out or get online and buy some advertising. It's all, it's all what you make of it. You have to have good content, first of all. I mean, you have to. You know, if you, if you put up, you, you have to have a great logo. You have to have a great name. And if you don't have, if, if you have those and then you, you don't have great content, you really have nothing because they'll tune into one episode and I go, well, that was horrible. Because uh, if the sound quality is bad, if the content is bad, you know, they won't come back for show two. And they'll move on to the next the next show. So uh, how much did you spend on equipment for your show? Uh, well, <laughs> that's funny because I've, I've never, I have to say I haven't made any money off the show, but I have had fans buy me equipment <laughs> for the show. Uh, what did uh, they buy you? Uh, they bought me a mixing board <laughs> for one. Uh-huh. Was they, that a surprise like or was that something you asked for? It was a surprise. Yeah, it was kind of a surprise. And I was like, okay, well, cool. So <laughs> a fan, they, a fan they, just they sent it to you? Wanted. They said, hey, no. They said, hey, what would you like? Or what would you like for the show? You've given, you, know, you have fans that will go, hey, yes, I feel like I've taken a lot of entertainment from you with no return. And you know, they'll say, hey, uh, what do you want? And we joke and we said, well, we need a mixing board. And they said, okay. <laughs> That's it. Like, okay. And so they gave us the money and we bought it and we picked out what we wanted, and but for the most part, I don't know. I'd probably say probably eight hundred to fifteen hundred dollars total. Yeah, <laughs> that's just amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's a real community on online. It sure is. Yeah, good stuff. And, and it's and it's all throughout the year. I mean, I haven't like bought. I didn't buy it all at once. It's just something like we've built up from the ground up, you know, and it's still building on. But what you're doing is really more expensive and more involved than most podcasters do because first of all you're using the video medium which is more complicated for sure and secondly right. you're you're doing it live you're streaming stuff right. live yeah well i'm just trying to keep up with what everybody else is doing i mean it, it might seem like I, i'm i don't care or not but i mean i do i would you know if someone said tomorrow hey would you like to you know make some a lot of money off this and do this for a living yeah i'd do it in a heartbeat i mean but if it doesn't work out then that's fine i'm not throwing all my eggs into it you know it's just something I like I love doing I, I feel like I do well and uh, I, I don't think there's anyone out there else out there that's just like us I mean I'm sure there's someone that's kind of close but you know we have we have our fans and they they love our show and they love what we do and that that's the weirdest part is you get done with what you're doing and then you know you're like well I don't know if that was good or not and then you get feedback and you're like okay someone actually likes that that's kind of great <laughs> you know it sure is. It Weird. sure is. Yeah, good. Really uh, good. May I ask, what is your day job? Uh, I am a computer technician. Have you ever thought about starting another podcast show based on the success you've had with this one and using it yes. for your career yeah. as a computer tech, for example? You know, I, I have. I, I, I've thought of different ideas throughout the years, but I never have jumped on them because a lot of it is, is logistics. You know, uh, for me, I, I have to have a co-host because I can't just sit there by myself and just talk. 
I have to I have to feed off of someone else. And uh, I've actually gone through several co-hosts throughout the years. And uh, I think that whenever we change co-hosts, it actually changes the dynamic of the show. And I think it actually kind of makes it, you know, it gives it a little refresher. Yeah, so, that's true. That's true. It does. Yeah. Because, you, you know, you're not doing the same old stuff, you know, over and over and over again. You talk about all new different stuff. Well, good. Any best practices that you'd like to share with our listeners in terms of podcasting and especially streaming? You know, what What I want to say is try to get your audio the best you can. If it's the difference between buying something that, that that's, one, that's $20 more, 20 to $50 more than what you might have wanted to spend. But if it makes your audio quality better, do it, you know, in, in the long run, you know. You're gonna you're gonna like it, and uh, with the streaming, live streaming, you know, don't be if, if you're doing a podcast, you're already not afraid. But you know, a lot of people get, are afraid to get in front of the camera, especially when they know that there there could be potentially thousands of people that watch them. But uh, just put it out there and do it. You know, and have fun with it. That's all I gotta say. You know, good stuff. Well, hey, thank you so much for joining us today and telling us more. Give out your website if you would. Uh, uh, Ten drink minimum dot com. It's uh, one zero d r i n k. M I N I M U M dot com. I had to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> Ten drink like, oh, minimum dot com. com, not spelled. Yeah, so with a number ten. In, in our show, our show, like you, you go to our website on Tuesday nights at uh, eight p.m. Mountain Time, and we're live streaming on our website right there. Our, our chat, our chat room is right below, it and phone numbers right there as well. Good. Well, Chris Burnett, thank you so much. The hey, show is Ten Drink on, Minimum, man. and we appreciate yeah. you sharing that with us. Thank you. Hey, no problem. Copyright the Hartman Media Company. For publication rights and interviews, please email media at jasonhartman.com. This show offers very general information. Opinions of guests are their own. Nothing contained herein should be considered personalized, personal, financial, investment, legal, or tax advice. Every investor's strategy and goals are unique. You should consult with a licensed real estate broker or agent or other licensed investment, tax, and or legal advisor before relying on any information contained herein. Information is not guaranteed. Please call 714-820-4200 and visit www.jasonhartman.com for additional disclaimers, disclosures, and questions.